This is a story about the thousands of employees who every morning stream into the three NCR Dundee factories and of the work they do there. To tell the story of the thousands, there is Guy Smith, who works on the assembly lines at Block 24, John Anderson, machine operator in the main manufacturing plant. Also in the main manufacturing plant, there is Moira White. Olive Price, who works on the assembly lines, but in the Camperdown factory. And Kenneth Lamb, an apprentice. Let's go back to the morning these five came to NCR for the first time. In the training school, the new apprentices have assembled to listen to the first lecture in their five years course, here being given by Dick Allen, who will be their instructor, advisor and friend for the first 12 months. He outlines the course to be followed. In the school, Kenneth was to get a sound practical training. For theoretical background, he could attend the technical college on day release. By doing this, he had a chance of gaining his national certificate in engineering during the years of his apprenticeship. As he listens, Kenneth Lamb catches a glimpse of what lies ahead. On completion of his apprenticeship, he may go to work in the main production plant and perhaps be in charge of one of the many special purpose machines which are a feature of NCR production, like the 12-foot high vertical broaching machine used in the production of Class 31 racks and similar parts. Or he may be responsible for machine setting or he may become a plant maintenance engineer. Some of the apprentices will go to the tool room. Tool making offers a great future for the apprentice and great responsibilities as well, for tool makers make and maintain the tools required in the manufacture of component parts. Other apprentices will go to help in the design of the tools. They will work in this drawing office with a team of some 30 designers. But this is all in the future. Today, Kenneth Lamb must listen to the lecture by the instructor and so start learning the first principles of engineering. Meanwhile, on that first morning in one of the other factories, another lecture was going on. The safety officer, Bill McLean, speaks to all new employees soon after they enter the factory. Thus it was that the other four new starts joined a group to hear a talk on safety measures and were told about the use of safety gloves, goggles, shoes and other protective clothing before going their separate ways. Moira White was to work in the drill shop and after an explanation of the job by the supervisor, Jean Arnott, she soon learnt the knack of handling a light drill. Employees like Moira do other kinds of work in this plant inspection of components, for instance, or work in one of the processing departments. John Anderson had told the job foreman, Bill Finnan, of his previous experience on presses, so he needed very little introduction to his first job in the light press shop. With his experience, he might have been given work in the medium press shop. He might have gone to the heavy press shop, where giant machines can transform, at a single stroke, plain sheet steel into familiar shapes. This one forms the cabinet of a class 100 cash register. Another one forms the side frames of the same machine. John might have started work in the auto shop and there, after a period of training, become a skilled auto setter. Again, he might have been trained to operate one of the giant multi spindle drills which are used in the machining of class 31 base castings and side frames. Men and women like John and Moira, working in the main production plant, maintain a steady stream of component parts amounting to over three million parts every week. Parts that are stamped out, 
parts that are drilled, parts that are turned, parts that are milled, hobbed, threaded, riveted, parts that are shaped. Parts controlled to precision limits by specially trained inspection personnel using measuring equipment capable of recording one ten thousandth part of an inch. Before the manufactured components leave Block 4, many of them are subjected to process treatment. Some parts go to the electroplating department, which may be numbered among the most modern plants in Britain. Sections of this are fully automatic. Some components must be manipulated by hand. Whether automatic or manual, the plating solutions must be constantly checked by analysts. Other components have to be heat treated. The cabinets must be stove enameled and finally inspected. Once passed to the exacting NCR standard, the component parts flow to the assembly line. Here, at Block 24, the Class 100 cash register is assembled. And alongside, the Class 21, Class 6000, and the Class 2000 accounting machines are assembled. It was to a sub-assembly of the Class 100 machines that Guy Smith was taken on his first morning. He was shown by job leader, Bill Fletcher, how the various components are brought together to make the indicator unit sub-assembly. After thorough testing, the units are fed by a continuous conveyor system to the main construction benches. The Class 100 cash register has been a wholly Dundee-made product since 1948 and is produced in a wide variety of different models. Guy soon discovered that the Dundee factory personnel have a special affection for the Class 100 machine. They believe that their achievement in connection with this first Dundee assignment established the confidence which enabled the parent organization in Dayton, Ohio, to entrust them with the great engineering responsibilities of the present day. As the organization developed, the assembly lines became longer and production increased, so that today many skilled employees, both men and women, are required on the assembly of the machine. Olive Price, on her first morning at Camperdown, was taken through the main assembly lines. She saw, for the first time, this vast factory area. Here, the national adding machine, the class 3000 and class 31 accounting machines are assembled. This is a factory where every employee is carefully selected and trained to high skill. A place where everybody takes a pride in his or her job. Here, sub-assemblies of the Class 31 can be seen being brought together. Stage by stage, the machines assume their familiar appearance, are lined up for testing, Then every machine is checked, and only then can it be sent out for dispatch. Over the lines again, from the class 31 to the class 3000, and finally to the national adding machine. Here again, deft hands are required, for the assembly work is intricate. Great mechanical skill and knowledge must go into the machines at every stage before they will survive the searching tests made at the end of the line. Olive Price started work on her first day on a sub-assembly of the National Adding Machine. And here she is, receiving instruction from job leader, Bill McKenzie. 
Thus it was that these new members of the NCR family found their places in the Dundee organization. Soon they were also to discover that NCR is more than just a place to work. From the day the new employee first enters, his or her health is the concern of the company's medical officer and his qualified nursing staff. If, during employment, special medical, therapeutic or first aid treatment is required, all facilities are available. Every day, the safety of every employee is the concern of the safety officer. He sees to it that no foreseeable hazard at work is allowed to exist. Canteens also cater for the needs of employees. This is one of four dining rooms. Over a thousand meals are provided daily. While behind the scenes, kitchen staff ensure tasty and attractive dishes at prices all can afford. After the midday meal, some choose to relax, while others use their spare time to practice their favorite games. Football, of course, is the most popular, and the NCR teams have many league victories to their credit. Tennis, cricket, bowls, angling, basketball, and badminton, they're also popular sports, and for each, there is a section in the NCR Sports and Social Club. And for those with a musical turn of mind, there is the Operatic Society. The newcomers discovered all this soon after they came to NCR, and within a few months, they had settled down to their new jobs. Moira has moved to a new drill section, John is at home in the press shop. Kenneth is now becoming adept in the use of machine tools. Guy has left the sub-assembly and is now working on the main assembly lines of the class 100 cash register. And Olive, having finished her period of training, has been transferred to the inspection of the national adding machine. She has now the responsibility of making some of the final checks on the machines before they're passed to the shipping and transport department. Once information about the complete machines is passed through this department, they can send out confirmations of delivery to all parts of the world. And these are the machines which are finally sent. 